Hey guys, what's up? My name is April. In case you're new here, I'm a certified personal trainer and certified nutritionist, and I help petite women get in the best shape of their lives and just feel strong and confident and powerful in their smaller frames. I myself am 5'1". In case you're wondering, that's probably the question I get asked the most, so I am pretty short, but I know we have lots of women in the short girl gang community here who are shorter than me and taller than me. If you're wondering what fits the petite category, it's any woman who's 5'4 and shorter, any body type. You can be any shape, any body type it's really just about height because it's all about metabolism the shorter you are the slower metabolism you have just naturally so nice to meet you if you're new here um, today I'm really excited I thought that I would do a video all about carb cycling we're gonna talk about why you might want to do this as a petite woman what the benefits are and I thought it'd be cool to show you exactly how I implement it like meal by meal I'm gonna show you guys what a day of carb cycling looks like for me, both a high carb day and a low carb day, and how you do it all. So I wanna make sure you guys see like the nitty gritty details so that you can apply it to your own life. So without further, further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so carb cycling consists of eating higher carb days and lower carb days, and it usually has to do with your workout routine. So you would eat the higher carb days on days that you work out or you train, and you'd eat the lower carb days on your rest days or your days where you're not going to the gym and exerting a lot of energy. So before we can get into the reasons why further, you have to understand what carbs are and why you might wanna cycle them. So carbohydrates are the body's preferred source of energy. It's where we get most of our energy from and energy is the same as calories. Our body prefers to use carbohydrates as energy because they're the easiest to digest and sort of break down into the bloodstream and then use as fuel when we're doing activities. They, uh, for that reason, are you know easily digested quickly and they cause a spike in insulin, which is a hormone that is a fat storing hormone. Let's break that down even a little bit further. So when you ingest a carbohydrate, which is a sugar by the way, it's all carbohydrates are sugars, breaks down into the bloodstream and because there are now these sugars just all throughout your body, if you're not gonna put them to use, you're not gonna start exercising, our insulin is gonna come in, insulin levels rise, and it's going to try to clear the sugar out of your bloodstream and put it into your energy reserves. So here's the thing, our energy reserves are really just not that large. So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates in one sitting without pairing it with a protein or a fat to slow down the absorption of those sugars, then your body's just gonna sweep all the blood sugar away and store it somewhere in the body and the excess gets stored as fat. That's a really simplified version of it. This is probably why carbs have such a bad rap, but they're not bad. You need carbs. You need carbs so much to lose fat, to have a healthy lifestyle, to build muscle in the gym. And if you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that building muscle as petite women is the most important thing because it helps increase our lean body mass, which helps speed up the metabolism, which helps you burn more calories at rest, which helps you lose fat in the long run and just have this life where you're able to burn calories whether you're at the gym or not just from having a fast metabolism. So carbs are really, really important. The whole point of carb cycling is that when you have higher carb days, you're padding it around your workout, so you're really fueling your workouts with energy, and then you're able to put those carbs to use towards building muscle instead of putting, you know, storing them in your fat reserves. And on lower carb days, when you're not as active and you don't need the fuel because you're just, you know, maybe you're doing an active recovery day where you just do a little bit of walking, or maybe you're like straight up sitting at your desk working all day, you don't need the extra carbs at all. You're likely more just to store them, so you just have a lower carb day. So in the past, this has been widely used by bodybuilders and people more, you know, who track calories and macros and are really intense about their nutrition and their lifestyle, but you can do it too. You don't have to track macros. I am tracking macros right now because I'm on a fitness challenge for myself, um, but you don't have to and I'm going to show you a full day of eating both a high carb day and a low carb day so that you can see and I'm going to do the exact same meals each day so you can just see what I removed from the meals to make it a low carb or what I added to make it high carb. I think that'll really help just put this into actual real applicational you know, format instead of just talking about carb cycling. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. and. Another really important thing about carb cycling is if your basic understanding of nutrition is not there, carb cycling is not a magic trick that is going to help you lose fat. Just like intermittent fasting and 
diets and all of this stuff, nothing is magic here. Um, this is like a cherry on top after you have spent some time really understanding basic good nutrition. So eating PFF, what I call PFF, PFF, which is proteins, healthy fats, and fibrous carbs at every meal. This keeps your body in fat burning mode. I also want to note that carb cycling on your low carb days, that does not mean that you eat like no carbs. This is not a keto diet. This is not a diet at all. This is straight up just how to fuel your body more efficiently for your training days and then fuel your body more efficiently for recovery days or rest days. So at no point are you, should you be starving or restricting your calories like crazy or doing keto. That's not what this is about. This is simply a um, sort of an extra tactic that you can add on to your already great nutrition to help get that extra edge on your training performance, your fat loss goals, and you know, just optimizing an already really strong foundation. Foundations, foundations, foundations. That's where you're gonna see the most results. Carb cycling, things like that. These are like fancy little advanced tips, but I do wanna teach them to you so that you feel like you have a range of tools and uh, you know, available to you. And especially for petite women, this can be a super great tool to use. Okay, so this is the fun part. I'm gonna walk you through two days of eating, my high carb day and my low carb day. And just to repeat this, my high carb day are days that I weight train and I suggest that you do weight training, strength training as your form of working out. And uh, so you can really put those calories towards building muscle. And then my low carb days are days that I'm resting and I normally just try to walk a lot, do stretches, foam roll and not work out. Okay, so I work out in the morning. So starting with my first meal of the day, I, I lately have been having a workout shake. and I'm not super hungry right when I wake up, but I don't wanna skip breakfast because I do wanna get those carbs in either before or while I'm working out to get what's called, in this case, if I'm drinking it while I'm working out, it's called intra-workout nutrition or intra-nutrition. So I have this shake that I've been loving. It's really simple, it's just frozen cherries, half a banana, some cacao powder, which is super high in antioxidants and really healthy for you. And I, I fill it with almond milk and collagen peptides. So that's my protein powder. And I just blend it up in my bullet and I take it with me to the gym. And that is always really good workout fuel for me. If I'm having a high carb day or a low carb day, I'm actually not gonna change the first meal of the day because I try to front load my calories. I still wanna have some good amount of carbs in the morning, whether I'm working out or not. I just still have this, I just keep this meal the same and it usually works out fine. Um, and it also allows you to just still have energy in the morning. So meal one doesn't change, looks the same for me all the time. Meal number two, I if you follow me on Instagram, you guys know I do this every day. I basically have Ezekiel bread or I have sprouted bread. I love Dave's killer bread and I have egg whites with some spinach on top of it Little sea salt or Himalayan pink salt for some extra vitamins and minerals that are well mostly just minerals in there And I also have a matcha green tea with a little bit of almond coffee creamer on my high carb days This would be my post-workout meal I make sure I have two pieces of Dave's killer bread and that's my additional higher carb right there on a day where I am having a lower carb day, so I'm not working out, I just remove one piece of bread. So I still have the same meal here, just to keep it the same. I just remove a slice of bread. I keep the protein the same. You still wanna have high protein on lower carb days and you wanna increase the fats. You know, have your healthy fats on every day. So um, I cook with olive oil for that. That's where the fats come from. Okay, moving into my third meal, I love to have a Greek yogurt with a little bit of banana, kind blueberry granola, some chia seeds, and that's it. It's a super easy meal. I like it because I can always take it to go almost anywhere and it's really easy to eat. So on my high carb day, and I am counting macros, so I will measure this out right now, but you can also eyeball this with your own meals and I'll show you how. On a high carb day, I'll probably have a little bit more granola and I will have more banana, right? Those are the carbs in that meal. I keep the protein the same. I usually try to aim for 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. So the Greek yogurt is high in protein naturally. Um, so I keep that the same. The chia seeds have a little bit of extra fiber and fats in them, which are great. I keep that the same. And on my low carb day, I will eat half as much of the carb. So I'll, you know, instead of going with half a banana, maybe I'll do a quarter of a banana and 
a little bit less granola. So maybe I'll sprinkle it with granola or just have a smaller handful of granola and that would be my carb cycling for that meal. On my rest days, I also find it's really helpful to still have treats. So I, something I've been doing the last 12 weeks in my personal fit cha fitness challenge is just having a two bite brownie every day. It's just been like nice for me and I enjoy it and it, it keeps me in this mentality that I'm not restricting and I still get to enjoy chocolate and desserts. So um, even on my rest days, which are lower carb, I do probably almost always have a two bite brownie um, along with that meal and I usually also have a second matcha in the afternoon maybe around that time or a couple hours later as well for my fourth meal if this is my higher carb day whether this actually is my higher carb day or my lower carb day I can eat the same thing here I'm having um, a whole wheat tortilla with some oven roasted chicken I made myself and I have some heart skin mozzarella mozzarella cheese that I melt on top I add some spinach and then the toppings really help make it flavorful I always add a salsa which is super low in calories and um, or you know just chop up some fresh tomato and I also add some non-fat uh, Greek yogurt again because it's a substitute for sour cream. It works really well in these like Mexican food You can always use non-fat Greek yogurt instead of sour cream and it tastes pretty much the same at least to me That's a huge hack for me. So that's what I have as my dinner meal and it's already sort of low carb just because the only carb is really the tortilla part so I'll have that for dinner whether that's a low carb day or a high carb day that's fine on top of that, if it's a high carb day, I'm also gonna have a fifth meal, either a shake or I'll have two extra pieces of bread. Um, I could have an apple, which is a carb with some cottage cheese. Whatever's happening on that day, I will have a little bit more. So today is a high carb day. I'm probably gonna just have um, a couple extra pieces of Ezekiel or Dave's Killer Bread on top of my meal. And if I still feel like I need a little bit more carbs or I haven't reached my carb goal, I'll have some fruit, which is a great source of carbohydrates, um, or some vegetables. However, vegetables are really low in calories. So when I'm talking about carbs, I'm mostly talking about your non-fibrous carbs. So the more simple carbohydrates, your you know granolas and breads and pastas, those types of carbs. Whether it's a low carb day or a high carb day, I still have tons of vegetables or I try to at least have spinach and peppers and tomatoes and just try to mix in some fresh foods as well. So that's how I would change my carb cycling, whether I was resting or working out. It's always a good idea to try to pad your workout with higher carb before the workout and after the workout. That'll help you make the most of those carbohydrates and help you build muscle and also burn fat. And it's important on your low carb days, I'll also say to make sure you eat enough fibrous carbs, so more vegetables to really help keep you full and satiated throughout the day. If you aren't counting macros and you're just trying to carb cycle, basically what I would do is on your high carb days, this is gonna vary for each individual, but you can have a scooped handful of carbs in every meal and in your low carb days, your rest days, you can have half a scooped cup, half a, half a cup, half of a scoop of carbs per meal. So you're just kind of cutting the carbs down. It's not actually half as many carbs in a day. It's not that much. It's probably more like maybe a 30% reduction in carbs on a rest day. Again, it, the proportions and um, percentages don't always scale well up or down. So that's not a perfect percentage. But generally, if you're just having a little bit less carbs on days you're not working out, it will help you with your fat loss. It can help you kind of get over a plateau if all the other foundational aspects of your health and fitness routine are in place, if you're already lifting weights, if you're um, you know, drinking three liters, two to three liters of water a day, if you're already eating a high protein diet and getting enough sleep and nutrition, carb cycling is an additional thing you can add that can help you get that edge. So I hope you guys loved this video. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it. Hey you guys, as me and my team were editing this, I completely forgot. I don't know how, but I forgot to update you guys on the fact that Petite Power Program is open for literally only a few more days. We opened it on Saturday. We have been at full capacity, not taking new members for two months, and we are taking new members now. So if you don't know, Petite Power is my 12 week fitness and nutrition program for petite women, five foot four and shorter. It's nutrition, fitness, we have, um, coaches on staff, registered dietitian, 
and myself coaching. Um, been running this program for over a year now and over 100 other petite women have gone through the program. It's amazing. Um, I'll leave it at that, but if you would like to join us for a March session, the link to join is below. And if you would like to learn more about what it's about, learn more about like, you know, my philosophy, all that stuff. They, I did host a free training on Saturday and I'm gonna put the link to watch the replay below. So that's if you want more info, you wanna like hang out, learn some more stuff. Um, there's a lot of info in there that you can watch. So um, I am so excited to invite you guys to come join me. It's gonna be incredible. There is a lot of one-on-one -on -one elements to it. Email check-ins, group calls, so much accountability, and of course a bomb ass program to follow that will get you amazing results. So if you have trouble applying everything that I tell you on YouTube, this is your chance to get that help. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, back to the YouTube video. Let me know what questions you have about carb cycling below. Would love to answer them for you. Let me know if you, what you think about this video, if you would do it, if you have done it, what your results were, and um, if you have done it and you struggled with it, what did you struggle with? Like, I would love to hear your thoughts below. And be sure to subscribe for more content tailored to petite women. And thanks, you guys. I will see you next week.